Hopkinton families and residents. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, superintendent of the public schools. And I wanted to share a little bit with you about the formation of the FY21 budget, where we are currently in budget season, and how you can learn more about the budget process and the budget that will be submitted to the Board of Selectmen on the 16th of January. So in creating the FY21 budget, we ask for principals, central office directors, the assistant superintendent, uh, and I, we all come together and we take a look at all of the sort of pieces on the table. We assess needs and we are very data driven in our process. And by the time I see the principals, they have already had conversations with the subject matter leaders and the curriculum teacher leaders in their schools as well as their school councils. So in creating the FY21 budget, obviously money is finite and we encounter some challenges. Those challenges this year included increased enrollment, increased transportation needs, because with increased enrollment, obviously we need more buses to transport our, our students. We needed additional social emotional learning programs. You know, as we continue to say, some of our kids are coming to us with greater challenges. Uh, we, open, we will be opening 14 new classrooms. Those will be at Hopkins, Elmwood, and the high school um, if we get that approval at uh, annual town meeting. Uh, we would need to safeguard the instructional excellence that you see in the Hopkinton Public Schools every day, and we believe that this budget does that. And of course, every year there are unfunded mandates. So when we talk about enrollment, one of the measures that we use for enrollment is called your SIMS report. We submit this information to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education a couple of times a year. In 2015-16, our October SIMS report indicated we had 3,463 students in the Hopkinton Public Schools. When we submitted the same report in October of 2019, we had 3,862 students, an increase of 399 children. If you asked us today, we are significantly above 399. Students keep coming here. Um, it's a wonderful problem to have. And so as we admit our students, we want to make sure that we have a budget that matches their needs. What you see on the screen here now are the actual enrollment numbers, or at least they were the actual enrollment numbers in 2019, November of 2019, when we had a demographer take a look at our enrollment. And you can sort of see the increase over time. So if you look at the year 2009-2010, we had 198 kindergarten students that year. If you carry that class, that specific cohort of kids, same students out over a 10-year period, you can see that today in our public schools, those students are at a class size of 291 students. You can also take a look just at kindergarten generally. In 2009-2010, we had 198 students in our district. And in 2019-20, this school year, we had 2000, sorry, 269 students begin as kindergarten students. Clearly, more and more students are coming to the Hopkinton Public Schools. Our demographer also did some work for us to help us try to understand where our class sizes would be going in the future. If we did the same exercise and we looked at the projected enrollment for 2021 20, for our kindergarten students, the estimate is that we will have 275 students in Hopkinton. Over 10 years, it's predicted that we will have 411 students in that classroom and just under 5,000 students in the Hopkinton Public Schools. So the budget that we are planning today addresses the needs in front of us, but to some degree, it also addresses long-term goals. This slide simply shows you from June 15, 2019 to the present, how many students have entered and exited in each one of our classes. And you can see that there has been a net gain in every one of our classes, some more than others. So for example, grade one, grade two, and grade three have 27, 29, and 20 respect respectively. Essentially what we're doing here is adding more than a whole class in some of those grade levels. Now let's switch gears for a moment. Let's look at our per pupil expenditure because we have a significant number of kids. What are we spending on average on each one of those students? In 2017, 
When you put Hopkinton into a mix of other communities, some based on proximity, others based on those of the districts that we like to compare ourselves to, you can see that we ranked at number 24, and our per pupil expenditure was $14,557.98 per pupil. So if you look at the state average in 2017, the per pupil expenditure was $15,458. So in 2017, Hopkinton was paying less than state average per pupil. The same is true today. We are still paying less than the state average for our per pupil expenditure. Only this time, Hopkinton has fallen to number 27 on the same list of towns. And yet you can see by this graph that we are still maintaining our excellent status statewide in terms of MCAS testing. Any of the green cells indicate that top, Hopkinton is in the top 5% statewide. Any of the yellow cells indicate that Hopkinton is in the top 6 to 10 cells, uh, cities and towns statewide. And any of the pink ones indicate that we are in the top 11 to 13% statewide. Most of these cells continue to be green. This information almost mirrors exactly what it looked like last year. You can also sort of see other accolades here. The Hopkinton Public Schools overall, best school districts in Massachusetts, we were number two out of 218 different school districts. We were ranked second as the best places to teach in Massachusetts, and we were ranked third in terms of our teachers, the, the districts with the very best teachers in Massachusetts. So in terms of per pupil expenditure and the services our children are getting, I will always say that Hopkinton is getting a whole lot of bang for its buck. Now let's take a look at the operating budget for FY21. In FY2020, our operating budget was $48,045,847. If we look at the salary increase for FY2021, and this is an important number, that number indicates the amount of money that we are going to pay more in salaries only, not expenses. That increase is at 7.6% or $3,649,793. Our expenses have not gone up very much, 1.4% or $675,000. Essentially, the increase of our budget from FY20 to FY21 is $4,324,871, which is at 9%. 9% does not meet the budget message given to us by the Board of Selectmen way back in September. In September, the Board of Selectmen suggested that we be at 5.54%, and we are at 9% today. I know budgeting can become emotional, uh, but the budget that you see here is not an emotionally driven budget. It's a data-driven budget. The things that are in this budget are things that principals have asked for, not because they would be nice to have, but because they are things that they need to have. They keep class sizes in check, and they keep programming at exceptional levels. This is sort of just another way to look at that. Salaries will typically be about 80% of the school's operating budget, while expenses are at 20%. If we break down the FY2021 salary increases, it's important to look at it this way for a moment. We have contractual obligations. Contractual obligations refer to the raises that teachers are going to get. Some of those raises are cost of living raises. Some of the teachers will advance a step on the salary schedule, meaning they've worked an additional year. And some of those raises are because teachers have earned a different um, degree. So they have a master's degree or 15 credits beyond their master's degree. Those contractual obligations are not negotiable in any way, shape, or form. That comprises almost $2 million of our increase. It's $1,798,000, and it's the equivalent of 4.7%. If you take a look at our staff requests, and I will show you what those staff requests look like in a moment, that's 4.8%, getting us to 9.5% of the 2021 salary request increase. So that's where we get to the $41,873,001 in increase in salaries of 9.5%.
And again, it's very important for me to state that the salaries that you see there, all of the teachers and the paraprofessionals and the administrative support, the custodians, anyone who is represented in those salaries, those are necessary positions. So let's take a look at where those staff requests have fallen. 13.5 of those staff requests are classroom teachers. 8.6 are student services, so those would be special educators, paraprofessionals, etc. cetera. Uh, administrative requests, 1.5 FTEs. Uh, social emotional requests, so those would be people who support students socially and emotionally, 1.2 FTEs. Uh, we have support staff, and even though it's the equivalent of four people, those four people would be broken out over six different departments. We have three requests for FTEs in building and grounds, and one in technology. I can tell you that all of these salaries and all of these staff requests are important to your students. So the FY 2020 expense budget, moving away from salaries, was $9,822,000. In FY 21, $10,497,717. So the expense increase is 6.9% or $675,078. This is simply a way for you to take a look at the expense budget broken down by educational program. You can see how much it costs to transport our students. You can see how much it costs to maintain our buildings. Um, technology and tuitions are also important uh, pieces of this pie. And finally, you can sort of just see all of those pieces broken down numerically. So why is this information so important for all of you to have at home? On Thursday evening, this Thursday, January 9th, the school committee is going to be holding at 7 o'clock at Hopkinton High School our budget hearing. That's an opportunity for you as residents and families and taxpayers to come to the school committee meeting and ask questions about this budget, about the decision making that went into this budget. It's very important that you are all informed citizens about uh, the department that is really the biggest stakeholder in terms of your entire municipal budget. I hope that you'll be able to be there. On the following Thursday evening, January 16th, the school committee will be voting on this budget and sending it off to the Board of Selectmen. And then the budget moves into a next stage for us. But it's very important that you understand that while we can get emotional, certainly, about the budget, what you see here is very numerically fact and data driven, and it's what your schools need and what your students need. And it keeps us at the very top, number one, number two, number three, number four in Massachusetts, even while our per pupil expenditure is very, very reasonable and our class sizes will be taken down next year as well with this budget. So I hope you'll support it, and I hope that you have questions. We'll see you on Thursday evening. Thank you.